Hello, this is the Bluth and the Baby Grand Piano. It's four foot 11 inches long, made in 1932. Just come into stock, so having a look at the piano to assess it. I'm so always very grateful to get one of these in. Uh, great favorite of our clients, and there aren't really enough to go around. This one I'm particularly fond of. Let's have a look at the ivory keys, first of all, which are perfect. Um, if you if we export the piano, we could change them if that was necessary, but they're perfect ivory, so it's a shame if we have to change those. We, it's in the polishing room because we were thinking about repolishing the piano. But my colleague, the polisher, says he could tidy it up instead because um, we repolish pianos, obviously, that are very faded or uh, really, really in need of polishing. There are quite a few marks on it, but he thinks he can certainly improve it. And the inside needs cleaning, but it's in very good condition. It has been fully restored in about 1973. One thing we look at when we're making a decision on whether to repolish is to whether there's a fade line where this lid's been open a lot and uh, you get a fade line here. But there is no fade line on the piano. Though it is slightly lighter on the inside, the music desk is slightly lighter and the top of the fall is in pretty perfect condition and it has obviously been open because that's lighter too. All pianos fade by the way, so if you have got a piano it's a good idea to vary it so that it fades evenly. The only way to stop a piano fading is to keep it right out of strong light. It's not just direct light, it's um, indirect light as well. Just strong light will fade a piano. Now the tuning pins are very tight, which is something we're always mentioning that's important. They're really, really important. That's so you don't have to restring the piano or change the rest blank below here. Um, this, they aren't original tuning pins. And there's a slight mystery here for me because these look like original Blutner strings. Uh, how Blutner finished them off. Here's another Blues to the Grand that's just come into stock and uh, about to assess this one, about to make a video of it. But you'll see that this has been restrung, it's fully re reconditioned, re restored by Blutner's in 1988. And you'll see that this is, uh, they put not Blutner style strings, they've obviously got them from a string maker and that's the standard way, of, way that strings are made in the UK or, or in Germany, it's probably German strings could be either really, um, German wire, and then it could be an English firm, could be a German firm. Um, and But you can see that, that there's this ridge here. So on the original boot and strings, they're, they're coned, there's no ridge. They, obviously there is an undercovering, but they've taken the top covering over and very beautifully finished off. So I'm not quite sure why we have obviously replacement tuning pins, but the strings look like original blue the strings. Uh, the color is, not really comment uh not really what you'd expect from 1973 um so not quite sure what to think of that um uh, maybe it is maybe i'm wrong if you're in the trade please correct me and love love to learn um, there's the decal you always get on bootners which shows the dates and you can see the latest date down the bottom there 1927 um and uh, there's one yes right 1927 right down the very bottom there and that's a serial number there that you get on bootners now I've taken the action out and nearly all Blutners also have quite a large serial number on the back there. So if it's not on the soundboard on yours, then that's where you can usually find it nearly always. Now on the hammer rail, on the hammer rail here, uh, I was surprised to find the restorer here, Dee Shaw, and uh, one of the person who worked on it anyway, Goff and Davey, well-known piano restorers in Hull, um, March 73, and they've done an excellent job. Now the action's in very good condition, all the keys are tight here. And I also noticed on the action here is written New Action Standards, December 1977. So that's these are the action standards and a lot of Blue Grands from this period in the 1930s did have problems with action standards. Um, Boot is an exceptional firm, but their action standards seem to get a problem uh, very often. And I noticed that they've left, someone's left a screw out here. Now, it's really important to put that back in um, because they're vital to the regulation of the piano to have all those screws, really. It's obviously working without that one, and there's one at the other end, too, that's missing. Uh, by the way, if you put screws in, you, I'm sure you know this, but just in case, if you turn, turn them backwards first so that they you don't open up the... Uh, the wood any any differently basically so that the, it finds the thread in the wood it's really important so because they can go loose and uh, that all, that's going to affect the regulation eventually if they keep being taken out and put back in um, so you probably know that and I hope that might be helpful to somebody you notice I've raised up these hammers here the hammer blow is about 50 I think 
um, and uh, it should be 47 and definitely affecting the touch having the wrong hammer blow so if uh, I just want to look at something here as well the hammers are not not only is the hammer blow a problem but the fact that it's sitting on the rail here and we have a problem in the base these are re replaced these are arbel hammers um, which is very encouraging so they're very good quality hammers I think it says arbel on one yes there we are you can tell by the green usually green is usually arbel's color color that's Germany it says arbel somewhere uh, maybe you can find it on this hammer. Sorry, I can't find it, but it's uh, if you're in the trade, you'll know there are Arbel hammers. Um, one of the two top piano maker, piano hammer makers alongside Renner. Um, so I just want to show you the problem. I've raised that one up too. But if, if they're not raised up, you'll see that the, the felt on the hammers is thicker and is touching. I don't know if you can see on this one, but uh, let's, I'll put the, light, the flash on just in case. So you can hopefully see better now I've got the flash on there um, and you'll be able to see that if, if I if I play that one, I'm trying to do this with one hand, there we are, sorry, that one actually catches the back check. So as you press the key, there's a slight in initial inertia to overcome and that's actually the back check. And on all these base ones, practically, there's one there that's worse. Let's see if we can look at that one. Um, that one is worse. So th the back check is catching um, sorry, you can't see that. So let's have a look here. Um, right, so that back check is catching the hammer. So when you press the key, it, the back check holds it, and then you have to overcome that inertia. So obviously the, the solution to that is to raise the hammers up. I've just checked with my assessment sheet, and actually the hammer blow is 54, which is very uh, far too great. So 47 is what we normally set it at. My colleague, who's the uh, main technician for the actions, he'll decide the exact, the best one for the piano. He's used to doing bootners all the time. Um, if we push, but the springs are also needing regulating. If we look at that one, that's that's a D and it, it goes straight down. And I've regulated these ones. So if I lift that up, the spring pulls it upwards. And that one too. So it's note 1441, that's C and C sharp. That's what the ones I usually do. And then uh, the set off is, was actually quite good. Um, the drop screw needed doing slightly to hold it nearer the string. So uh, general regulation I've mentioned back before. It's a beautifully constructed piano as uh, we're very fond of Bluton style 4As, which is uh, one of the very, very best baby grounds that there are. And the tone of this one, I'm very, you're listening to it later on, but I'm so impressed with it. Dampers obviously need not working properly. Um, but even the break point is very good. That's the point at which the strings cross over. And the way they've matched in these copper strings with the steel strings too. So here's a summary of the work. And the main work to do is fit missing action stays. Really crucial. Um, has new action standards. Lubricate. Yeah, I didn't mention, well, we've got the touch here. It's always talking about this. Very heavy in places. So with lubrication, that... That will almost certainly be sorted out, I'm sure. And soft pedal noise when depressing, well, that's a small thing that I noticed that I picked up. Uh, so the hammer blow needs decreasing, and then we can fine regulate. So uh, this is a mystery to me in, uh, in the trade, if you can help. Restrung, is it restrung, or just new tuning pins? They, it's too neat, to, it looks really neat, and all the, um, I'm, I get stuck sometimes, even though I've been doing this for so long. Uh, but uh, very interesting, a very beautiful sounding piano. So we'll compare it to some other pianos. Um, so this is the, the middle mid tone of this piano, and then we're going to compare it with the other Blutner I showed you earlier on. That's just come come in. It's a slightly longer piano that one. That's uh, uh, the same sort of age, but uh, five foot five. So it's a slightly different piano, and and then we'll compare it with a couple of other grands as well. This one's about 1925, needs uh, voicing and uh, needs refacing and voicing. You might have heard an echo from this Steinway upright in the background, which hasn't got any dampers, so it's resonating in sympathy with the Blutner. This is a very short chapel grand, 140 inches long, one of England's best short grand pianos.
And a 1979 Kemble, this is also, this is 141 centimetres long, so very short too.